Before I learned to use the grep command, my life was miserable. I used to spend hours manually searching through text files for what I was looking for, or using buggy search features that never worked properly in programs like Eclipse. I would find myself frantically moving up and down the directory structure, searching for the files that I was looking for. I had trouble sleeping at night and I couldn't concentrate at work. But those days are over now. Thanks to the grep command, I've developed a new perspective on life. Search problems that used to take hours now take seconds. Here's an example of how the grep command can work for you. In this file, I have the entire text for the novel Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This is a novel that I was forced to read in high school. It's extremely long, and as you can see here, it's 7,837 lines. If I want to find an important part of this story that I remember from high school, I could try scanning the text line by line visually. Or I could use the grep command. For example, I remember something about a cake in this story. Let's search for uses of the word cake in this story. Here are some of the results that were found. Here's a reference to a dimly lighted room beside the rotten bride cake that was hidden in cobwebs. I remember reading that. I also remember something about a felon in this story. Let's search for instances of the word felon. And here are the results that it found. Grep is not just limited to searching through text files. Here I have the entire source code for the Linux kernel. This repository contains thousands of files. If you type find and dot, that will show you all of the files that are here. If you want to find a file or directory with a specific name quickly, you can use grep to help you solve this problem. You can type find dot to list out all files and directories, then pipe this into grep. Let's search for everything containing the word video. And look at that. We found all files in the Linux kernel source code containing the word video. After I started using grep, I noticed a few changes. Suddenly, I had more energy. I had more confidence to speak up at work and I found that others finally treated me with the respect that I truly deserve. This new sense of confidence comes from the multitude of ways that I have to search for information now. When we use the grep command to search for instances of the word felon in the novel Great Expectations, we only found matches of the word felon that exactly matched the case that we provided. If there was an instance of the word felon that started with a capital F, we wouldn't find it. You can use the dash I flag with grep to do a case-insensitive search. Here you can see that this search found one additional match that uses a capital letter that the previous search didn't find. Now that we found these matching pieces of text, we might want to go look at the original surrounding context in the file. Wouldn't it be great if grep would show the line numbers? Well, it can if you include the N flag. Now, each of the matching lines is prefixed with a line number where that match appears. Another common use case for the grep command is to find process ID numbers for matching processes running on your computer. If you type ps-ec, you'll find a listing of the process ID number for each program running on your computer. In addition, you'll also see the name of that program. This list is very long and contains too much information to read. We can use grep to filter this out. Let's search for the process ID number of Firefox running on my computer. Here it is. One of the most powerful features of grep is using it to search through multiple files at once. Let's use the grep command to search for instances of the word module in every file in the current directory. And here are the results. It found references in the make file, the maintainers file, and the credits file. In the bash shell, this wildcard syntax won't traverse directories for you. If you want to search recursively through all subdirectories with grep, use the dash capital R flag. Let's review a more practical example of searching with grep. In the past, I did some research into how keyboard events work in the Linux kernel. This special constant is used in at least a couple places in the Linux kernel. Instead of trying to read every line of the Linux kernel manually, let's use grep to search for this string. We can use the dash R flag just like last time. And look at that. Here are three instances where this string was used in the Linux kernel. It's also useful to use the n flag to find the line where it was used. And here is this constant in its original context. Now that I know the true power of grep, I have the confidence to use it for even more complicated tasks like this one. Grep is also great for doing regular expression-based searches. If we didn't know the entire name of this constant, we could use wildcards to search for something similar to what we want. 
And here are the results. GNU Grep supports three different flavors of regular expressions. I've discussed the differences between these regular expression flavors in detail in several other videos. Using Perl compatible regular expressions, you can access several more advanced regular expression features. Here is a similar search that makes sure the constant starts with a word break. Here is a similar regular expression search that searches for any string constant that starts with a K followed by an underscore, followed by any number of uppercase letters. In this case, we can also include the H flag, which prevents the file name from being shown. In addition, we can specify the O flag. This causes grep to print out only the match part of the text, instead of the entire line, which might contain irrelevant information. Here you can see that we've extracted all of the string constants that match the pattern we specified. The O flag is very useful because you can use it to extract specific pieces of text and then do further analysis on them. For example, let's create a list of all unique string constants that we extracted. Now we can also count them to see which ones are more popular. We can sort the list by popularity. And there you go. Here are the most common string constants that match the pattern that we specified in a regular expression. Another useful grep flag is the dash v flag. This causes grep to only print out lines that don't match instead. For example, this make file contains a bunch of comments that start with a pound sign. We can use grep with the dash v flag to print all lines that don't start with a pound sign. Let's pipe this into a new make file and inspect the differences. As you can see, the file on the right is missing all of the comments because we filtered them out with the grep command. But that's not all. Here's an example use case of grep that I use to impress people at parties. Sometimes you may do a grep search that returns too many results to be useful. For example, here are all of the results that you get when you search the Linux kernel for the word foo. In our case, we might want to restrict the search to assembly files. If we try doing star.s as a recursive search, we don't find anything. This is because the star s doesn't expand to match any of the directories, so the search never really becomes recursive. A better way to solve this problem is to use the find command to filter out the file type. You can then use the exec argument to run a grep search on each individual file that's found by the find command. And here are the results of that search. The grep command also supports several other useful flags, such as the dash capital A, B, or C flags. These flags change the behavior of grep, so it doesn't just print out the lines that contain matches anymore, but it also prints out the surrounding context. The dash lowercase a flag is also occasionally useful if you need to search for text in a file that gets treated as binary data. This is sometimes necessary for searching files that contain text in multiple different character encodings, or when binary data is also mistakenly included in your text file. It's finally time to take back control of your life with the power of the grep command.